The Digimon card game Starter Deck Kokyutus Blue was released on Japan back in April of 2020. Its English release was announced and will be in January of 2021. But which cards compose this deck? What are the main strategies and how they work? This and more you see right now. The starter deck Kokyutus Blue is one of the first wave of releases we will get into the Occident. Alongside with the two other starter decks, Gaia Red and Heaven's Yellow, we will also get the release of the first expansion pack with the two versions, 1.0 and 1.5. A booster set that will combine all cards from the first three Japanese booster packs, New Evolution, which mates in power and union impact. Kokyutus Blue is a starter deck, featuring Match Ishida, and it's based around their blue color, with Digimons with powerful effects. It is focused in controlling the board, utilizing the lack of Digivolution sources in the opponent's Digimon to create a huge advantage and tempo. If you don't know how to play the game, I will link some videos that helped me a lot to understand the rules, as well the official translated rulebook down in the description. I have to make a big shout out to digimoncard.dev for providing the card images and the translations for them. Their work is really really important to your community, so please check them out. Now let's check all cards inside of the deck. As usual, let us start with the Digimon cards. For the only Digitama card we have, Tsunamon. It is a level 2 and it has an inheritable effect. Your turn, when this Digimon is battling an opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution sources, this Digimon gets 1000 dp. Digitamas are always welcome and Tsunamon is no different. It synergizes with the Dex team and it gives a little nice boost by attacking. Now let's go to the main deck Digimon. Gomamon. It is a level 3, vaccine attribute, sea animal type, with 3000 dp, costs 2 memory to play from hand and 0 to digivolve, requiring a level 2 blue Digimon. It has no effects. The standard 2 cost vanilla rookie Digimon. As I stated before, this kind of Digimon are really good in fast strategies which is the case for this deck. Gabumon Level 3, Data Attribute, Reptile Type, 2000 dp, causes 3 memory to play from hand and 0 to Digivolve, requiring a level 2 blue Digimon. It has an inheritable effect. When attacking, discard 1 Digivolution source from the bottom of one of your opponent's level 5 or lower Digimon. It helps taking off the opponent's Digivolution sources, shutting down the inheritable effects and assisting the deck's strategy. Bearmon Level 3, Vaccine Attribute, Memo Type, 4000 dp, costs 3 memory to play from hand and 0 to Digivolve, requiring a level 2 blue Digimon. It has no effects. Another vanilla for the deck, not the greatest one because of his cost, but it can help you anyway. Ikakumon. It is a level 4, vaccine attribute, sea animal type, with 5000 dp, costs 4 memory to play from hand and 2 to digivolve, requiring a level 3 blue Digimon. It has no effects. The basic champion vanilla. It has a good cost to digivolve and a good dp. A nice level 4 to use for digivolve. Garurumon. Level 4, vaccine attribute, beast type, 4000 dp, costs 5 memory to play from hand and 2 to digivolve, requiring a level 3 blue Digimon. It has an inheritable effect. When attacking, discard a Digivolution source from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. Very similar to Gabumon's effect, but this doesn't lock you into selecting a level 5 or lower Digimon. It helps a lot in disrupting opposing inheritable effects, even against level 6 or 7 Digimon. Grizzlymon Level 4, Vaccine Attribute, Beast Type, 6000 dp, 
costs 5 memory to play from hand and 2 to digivolve, requiring a level 3 blue Digimon. It has two regular effects. First one is the blocker. When your opponent attacks, rest this Digimon to change the attack target to this Digimon. And the second one, when attacking, gets minus 2 memory. The standard blocker now for blue decks. Same stat line, same cost and same effects. And as every blocker, it has a very important role in this deck. Blocking is part of this game's strategy. It prevents direct attacks and attacks against rested Digimon as well. So, use your blocker wisely. Next is Where Garurumon. Level 5, Data Attribute, Beast Main Type, 7000 DP, Cost 7 memory to play from hand and 3 to digivolve, requiring a level 4 blue Digimon. It has an inheritable effect. Your turn, when your opponent has a Digimon with no Digivolution sources, security attack plus 1. Great card. An essential piece in this deck. Its inheritable effect makes Metal Garurumon even stronger, but it will get into that in a bit. Zudomon. Level 5, Vaccine Attribute, Sea Animal Type, 7000 DP, costs 6 memory to play from hand and 3 to Digivolve, requiring a level 4 blue Digimon. It has one regular effect. When Digivolved, discard 2 Digivolution sources from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. Pretty good Digivolve effect. It gets rid of 2 Digivolution sources at the same time breaking even more the opponent's inheritable effects. Plejomon Level 6, Data Attribute, Dragon Type, 12,000 DP, costs 10 memory to play from hand and 2 to Digivolve, requiring a level 5 blue Digimon. It has no effects. Its DP is pretty big, so it's nice to have a Plejomon in your security. Also, with cards like Gabumon and Garurumon under it, it can destroy an opponent's Digimon and discard up to two Digivolution sources from your opponent. Metal Garurumon. Level 6, Data Attribute, Android Type, 11,000 DP, costs 12 memory to play from hand and 4 to Digivolve, requiring a level 5 blue Digimon. It has one regular effect. When attacking, once per turn, this Digimon becomes active. Definitely one of the best cards in the deck. Once per turn, this card can become active again. This can be used both offensive and defensive. If you didn't get how this works, when you declare an attack, you must rest the Digimon you're attacking with. So, first this card will rest, then will trigger his effect and becomes active again. You can use this card with Wargarurumon as Digivolution Source to check one extra security card. Attacking two times can check up to four security cards. It is a high offensive play. In the other hand, if you see that you, you won't win the game in the turn, you can attack, check one or two security cards, become active again, then pass the turn. Your Metal Garurumon will not be rested and will not be able to receive attacks. Now let's go into the Tamer and Option cards. Matt Ishida Tamer card costs 2 with the effect. Start of your turn, if an opponent's Digimon has no Digivolution sources, gets 1 memory. Secured effect, play this card without paying its cost. A card that rewards you even more for discarding your opponent's Digivolution sources. More memory to work with can give you more resources to Digivolve or even play from hand, assisting the field control. Vulcan's Hammer Option card costs 0 with the effect. Main Get 1 memory. Security effect Get 2 memory. A staple card in the most of blue decks. It gives you one memory for free, facilitating evolving and other plays in the deck. The security effect is nice because it can end your opponent's turn or decrease their memory, 
Man can then spend more memory to play their cards. Sour Blue Option card costs 2 with the effect. Main Choose one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution sources. That Digimon cannot attack or block until the end of their next turn. Security effect Choose one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution sources. That Digimon cannot attack or block until the end of your next turn. This card is really good. It freezes one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution sources, making them not attack nor block for an entire turn, which can help you in both defensive and offensive. Wolf Call Option card cost 4 with the effect. Main Choose one of your Digimon's Digivolution sources and play it as a separate Digimon without paying its cost. Security effect Activate this card's main effect. This card is interesting, but I don't know if it is that good for this deck specifically. It plays one Digimon directly from one of your Digivolution sources, but most of your Digimon has a good inheritable effect and no regular effects, so I don't think it's valuable doing that. Ice Wolf Claw Option card costs 7 with the effect. Main. We turn one of your opponent's Digimon back into their hand. That Digimon's Digivolution sources are discarded. Security effect. Activate this card's main effect. This deck's main removal. It doesn't destroy the opponent's Digimon, but returns it to the hand, which can force them into pay the cost another time to play the card again. The deck's content for the English version is not known yet by the time I am recording this video, so I am following the Japanese release information for now. It will probably be the same content, but if something changes, I will point it out in the comment section. And following the Japanese version, we will have the following number of each card in this deck. For Tsunomon, for Gomamon, for Gabumon, for Bearmon, for Ikakumon, 2 Garurumon, 4 Grizzlymon, 4 Wargarurumon, 4 Zudomon, 2 Plejumon, 2 Metal Garurumon, 4 Matt Ishida, 4 Vulcan's Hammer, 4 Sorrow Blue, 2 copies of Wolf Claw, and 2 copies of Ice Wolf Claw. Now that we know all the cards, let's talk about what the deck can do. The weak condition of this deck is control in the field and both players' resources. It manages well your memory and disables your opponent's inheritable effects. The main strategy of the deck is to discard your opponent's Digivolution sources and, when they run out of it, you have a lot of effects in synergy with that at your disposal. This deck has a lot of great defensive and offensive cards and plays. Metal Garurumon can attack twice or just one time and become active again to dodge attacks. Sour Blue can push your attacks even further by freezing one of your opponent's blocker or gain you one more turn by not letting one of your opponent's Digimon attack. The biggest upside of this deck is the resource management it can create. Vulcan's Hammer provides you more memory to work with and Ice Wolf Claw can return an opponent's Digimon to the hand which forces your opponent to pay the cost again. By having both offensive and defensive plays, this deck has a lot of stamina during a match. It can endure well your opponent's disruptions and create a comeback in the late game. In my opinion, the only downside this deck has is that it lacks a little bit of power. It struggles in getting rid of high attack Digimons. That is why the blue variant of the Omnimon decks are so strong. They have a good control aspect and a great attack potence with Omnimon. This video is focusing in the Kokyutus blue deck only, but let's say you really enjoy this strategy and want to improve your deck. What cards you might consider playing? By the time I'm recording this video, we don't know all the cards that are in Union Impact, so I will just talk about cards in New Evolution and Ultimate Power. In New Evolution, we have Upamon, the staple Digitama used in blue decks. 
Once per turn, when you attack and your opponent has a Digimon with no Digivolution sources, you draw one card. It is the blue Digitama that most gives you advantage. Combine that with the already good resource management of the deck and you have a pretty good starting point. BT1 Gabumon is a wonderful card. It has a 3 cost to play from hand and its when played effect lets you draw one card. This card is heavy to use it in other Rookie Rush decks and is considered by many one of the best level 3 Digimon we have in the game right now. BT1 Gomamon have a nice inheritable effect of giving you one memory when destroyed. Momon is a lower cost blocker. Frigimon has Genin, which can help you attacking and not losing the body on field. B21 Ikakumon can help you into pushing attacks. Leomon gives you still memory when it's destroyed. <laughs> How ironic. Gorillamon is a nice level 4 with only 1 cost to digivolve. Saber Leomon discards 4 digivolution sources for one of your opponent's Digimon. Omnimon. As I said before, this card is insane. It fills the power gap this deck may have, destroys Digimon when digivolved, it can become active again one time by returning the level 6 Digimon underneath to the hand. This card is just awesome. BT1 Matt Ishida is the standard memory fixer tamer now for both. It puts you at 3 memory at the start of your turn if you have 2 or less memory. Also, if you play a blue Digimon, you can rest this card to discard one Digivolution source from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. Hearts Attack it can be good to disable the inheritable effect of one opponent's Digimon. It's too bad this card doesn't have a security effect. Now going to ultimate power. BT2 Ikakumon has an inheritable effect that discards one Digivolution source from the top of one of your opponent's Digimon, which is pretty neat against decks that have high level Digimon with good inheritable effects. Vikemon is a pretty good level 6 Digimon to use in a blue deck. If your opponent controls a Digimon with no Digivolution sources, these cards gain 1000 DP and one extra security check during your turn. Yoikido is nice to gain more memory, but not that great of a card. And Arctic Blizzard is an interesting card. You choose which Digivolution source you will discard from one of your opponent's Digimon, and one Digimon you control gains 2000 DP for the turn. And that's it for today. To finish things off, Kokutus Blue is a really adaptive deck. You can create a lot of different builds to take advantage of the control aspect of the deck. This was just a quick overview of the deck and what it can do. As always, we're creative in deck building and have a good time playing. If you have some suggestions, things I may have missed, other decks you guys want to see a discussion about, maybe a blue Omnimon deck or even other colors, like green or purple decks too, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you soon, farewell.